my uh, principal responsibility is to make sure that insurance consumers are protected, that insurance companies keep their promises, that they pay claims that are supposed to be paid, that they abide by the consumer protections that you and your predecessors here in the legislature passed, uh, and uh, to make sure that we have uh, uh, products available at affordable prices with options uh, uh, for our small businesses, our large businesses, and individuals. We regulate all insurance. So we regulate auto insurance, homeowners insurance, uh, health insurance, uh, liability insurance, med mal. Uh, so pretty much when you buy insurance, the chances are we're the ones who regulate the insurance. And we also make sure that companies uh, who come into our marketplace qualify to do business here, that they are financially sound, that um, they can pay claims when claims are due. Uh, so we also license the companies and they have to get licensing before uh, uh, they're allowed to do business here. Congress has designated the state superintendents and commissioners as the, collectively, as the lead regulators for the national insurance market. So Superintendent Kaufman is the insurance regulator, not just the state level insurance regulator. Uh, Bob Wake is my counsel and I've asked him to come here he, uh, because of uh, his extensive work on federal legislation, including his most recent work on uh, the provisions in the financial reform bills that would create a federal insurance office. A few years ago, there was similar legislation uh, in, the, in the U.S. House of Representatives. It was uh, um, supported by the then uh, uh, Bush administration and his secretary, his secretary of Treasury, and uh, promoters of the legislation were really uh, promoting uh, the idea of deregulation and establishing an optional federal charter at the federal level. In other words, to uh, federalize insurance regulation. Uh, and I use the term regulation loosely. The, the whole intent was to uh, let insurance, uh, the, the insurance industry, out of state-based consumer protections and requirements. So there was a huge push to federalize uh, regulation of insurance by establishing an optional federal charter to let companies pick which regulator they wanted to be regulated by with, of course, the assumption being that at the federal level there would be very few, if any, standards that would apply and the regulation or the regulator uh, would be uh, not as uh, stringent and not as, uh, uh, as, comprehen as comprehensive in oversight. So um, back then uh, there was a whole um, uh, blueprint that was issued by the then Secretary of Treasury uh, Paulson to uh, federalize certain things and establishing an insurance office within the Treasury Department was one of the first steps to to achieving an optional federal charter approach. Um, two years ago uh, the bill was uh, 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 called Office of Insurance Information and it, it looked like uh, the House of Representatives was very likely to pass it uh, and uh, we worked very closely with uh, a number of partners uh, at the federal level and here in the state. Then Attorney General and I, uh, Steve Rowe and I, weighed in opposing the legislation. Uh, the governor weighed in as well opposing the effort and um, uh, the, the chairs of the IFS committee weighed in. We partnered with organizations like MCOIL and others to weigh in and we were successful at um, essentially stopping the legislation in the House of Representatives. Um, we worked very closely with some of the uh, proponents of the legislation to try to minimize the preemption uh, in the legislation. Um, so to make a long story short, now we have uh, the Senate, uh, 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 Senator Dodd's um, uh, uh, big comprehensive overhaul of the financial uh, uh, services sector uh, with a uh, variety of uh, um, consumer protections and um, efforts to uh, to 
reform Wall Street and uh, the financial sector uh, to better protect consumers. Unfortunately, as part of that effort, there's also uh, this small piece of legislation called the Federal Insurance Office, uh, which has the same problems as the old House bill did. It would essentially preempt state-based uh, insurance regulation by empowering a newly created office in the uh, Treasury Department uh, and empowering federal bureaucrats to essentially enter into agreements with either foreign governments or foreign entities. And those agreements would essentially preempt state-based laws that apply. Um, which, uh, so there, there are really two big implications. One, we would lose our ability uh, to, uh, to regulate certain entities. Those uh, foreign insurers could come in into our state, do business in our state, and not be subject to my oversight or the laws that many of you passed. The second implication is that um, someone at Treasury could, could be empowered to essentially enter into agreements uh, that fail to get ratified as U.S. treaties. So the U.S. Senate could, uh, could refuse to ratify a certain treaty uh, but someone in the Treasury Department uh, could um, enter into an agreement to accomplish the same thing. Which is that um, uh, uh, Treasury uh, is essentially flying solo on this. There is no provision uh, uh, like there is in the House bill that would even uh, give the courts the ability to uh, uh, take a meaningful look at what Treasury is doing. And um, uh, international agreements are defined rather broadly. There's a minimal process for Treasury doing them going forward, but they don't have to involve Treasury. They don't even have to be intergovernmental. They can be with um, uh, a non-governmental regulator like the Council of Lloyds of London um, uh, under the bill. And they could go as far back as 1789 because all they have to be is an agreement of some sort between the United States and a foreign government or government agency or foreign regulator. First of all, um, we are not experts on trade whatsoever. Uh, but based on the little knowledge we have on international trade, is that this is really uh, the framework being set up by this legislation is a departure from the current framework where there are um, lots of safeguards that are in place to ensure that when the U.S. enters into particular agreements, that U.S. consumers and our laws and our uh, companies um, um, do not lose protections that they have. Part of the problem is that the preemption um, power <coughs> given to Treasury is could be so huge that um, even if it's if on the face of of the legislation it looks like something might be saved, um, it, it could be questionable whether. In fact, it is preserved um, and saved. Because this bill, the whole authority is designed for the purpose of preempting state insurance laws. It's a one-way ratchet. They have this broad authority to deregulate, to throw out state laws, and to micromanage state regulatory actions, but they can only take away. They're prohibited from doing anything regulatory in their place, even though the bill itself is uh, being discussed as a financial re-regulation bill. Yeah, we, can, we cannot comment where our delegation is. Uh, we have uh, expressed concerns about this particular provision to both Senator Collins and Senator Snow. I can tell you that in the past, um, uh, both were very uh, supportive of the idea of preserving state-based insurance regulation. As I read it, it gives to this one person, who we don't know who it is, it's a position that doesn't exist right now, authority to, to make unilaterally make decisions about whether or not there's uh, conflict with federal, with international trade policies relating to insurance, and that 
decision right there would preempt our state insurance laws.